Are you ready for your window shoppers to become paying customers? Equity Commerce is here to make that happen. We can help you automatically show the exact product visitors saw but didn't purchase on your site wherever they go on Facebook and Instagram using this magic called Dynamic Facebook Retargeting. To show these ads to your prospects today, sign up in your Equid Control Panel in the Marketing section and look for the Facebook Remarketing app. This is fully integrated into Equid and Facebook and so simple and effective you'll wonder why you hadn't done this sooner. To help you decide, if you sign up now and spend $50 by February 15th, you receive a free $100 advertising credit from our friends at Facebook. Okay, back to the show. This is the Equid E-Commerce Show with your host, Jesse Ness, along with Richard Ote. Hey guys, Jesse Ness here with the Equid E-Commerce Show, here with my co-host. Richard Ote, how you doing, Jess? I'm great, great. We're back with our regular expert competitor, com, com, uh, contributor, John Lincoln with Ignite Visibility. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for having me back again. Absolutely. So uh, for people who are just tuned in to this podcast without the, the previous ones, uh, John was named the Search Engine Search Marketer of the Year by Search Engine Land, and their company was the number one ranked SEO company by Clutch.co. So we've been talking about SEO, uh, kind of a series of SEO 101, basically. We've talked about keyword research, optimizing a page, and uh, attracting backlinks. So now we're going to talk about... So what's the easiest way to attract backlinks? Blogging and content creation. John, I imagine you've written a couple blogs in your, your past. <clears throat> I've written a lot of blogs, yeah, yeah, a ton. So what advice would you give to new merchants on the you know, first couple blogs to start? And, and it, it maybe let's start there, and then we'll come back to why would you do that. Yeah, so I've, I've probably published... 5,000 to 10,000 articles. And uh, I really, I mean, we've built in a small, not, not the entire business, but a, a large part of it at Ignite just through a blog, right? I mean, we've got about 80,000 visitors a month now. Um, and uh, it's really important to our business. It gets us to win awards. It gets us ranking for keywords. It gets people to to see us as thought leaders in the space. It gets people to come in and click on things and convert, and um, it's a strategy that definitely really works. The issue is it's gotten more competitive over the last four or five years, and you know people really know that content creation is, um, is something that can grow a business online. So, you know, it's kind of like, where do you start? Well, you know, first thing you need is to install a blog, right, and to make sure that your URLs are set up correctly. So if you're on example.com and you go to forward slash blog, your blog's there. You want it on a directory instead of a subdomain, which would be blog.example.com. And you want your blog post to um, just have a clean URL with the titles in it. So it's example.com um, forward slash blog forward slash blog title, right? So you don't want numbers in there. You don't want URL parameters. URL parameters are like question marks and stuff like that. So get that set up right, and then um, and and John, so yeah. so most site builders, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it, with with Equid in particular, a lot of people are on WordPress, yeah, Wix, Weebly, Squarespace. You know, like most of these site builders have, uh, you know, a built-in blog, right? Yeah. Would you recommend they just start there? Yeah, yeah. Any any blogging platform is fine. You know, there's some that are are a little bit more towards the other, but you can work with just about anything. It's just a matter of. Um, making sure you can get a couple things done, like the URLs, like having titles, descriptions, headings. A sidebar is really important. I was going to kind of go there. I think I see that as a huge mistake. Like people will make a blog and then they their sidebar is just empty. And what you don't realize is that there's only – those are the two most important things in a blog. It's your sidebar and then do you have pop-ups because that's how you get people to sign up one or the other. And I know not everybody likes pop-ups. But anyway, so – the reason the sidebar is important is because that's your only chance for somebody to come in and see where the heck they are on the internet. You know, they might Google, you know, how to set up a, a blog, for example, and then you come in there, you tell them, but if you don't have a little picture of there of yourself or your company, then you just lost a huge opportunity. So anyway, so you want to fill all that stuff out. And um, my favorite way to do it is to um, have a little pitch and then um, then have a couple calls to action, try to get them into a newsletter, subscribe to your social media, then get them to see your top posts of all time on that blog so you can increase your page count. 
Um, so if somebody clicks on it, you have more page views, and then you get into categories um, and um, the categories that you have on the blog, and then usually a search bar, and that's a good way to go about doing that. So okay. when it when it comes to blogging, John, is it more important to go really deep on that blog or multiple blog posts? Um, I'm not sure if I understand. So when we were referencing back to product pages having a certain number of words on it, oh, okay. category pages yeah, yeah, yeah. and homepage, is there, would you see a reason for someone to go yeah. super broad and long on a blog post? You know, you hear a lot about content upgrades yeah. and people trying to get rid of poor performing blog posts oh, and kind of keep adding. You hear so many contradictory things. Like, yeah. what do you, if they're just starting, <clears throat> Should they just should they go really deep on a subject, or what do you, what do you recommend if they're just getting started? So you just hit probably the biggest question in content marketing. It's um, I think about it like this: if I want this to rank inside of Google, it's got to be a thousand words or more. And really, ideally, it's about two thousand words. And if it's a really, really, really competitive topic, you might want to go three to ten thousand words, honestly. But if it's just a news thing. You don't need it to be really long, right? And you can show up in Google News for that potentially um, or maybe even the stories area. There's some technical things you need to do there. But the specific answer is it can be short if it's just something for your readers and if it's just news for like a newsletter. But if you really want it to rank in Google, you've got to be trying to hit over a 1,000 words unless it's a really, really niche like search term that you're going after. Um, and, or it's a really, really niche topic because basically competition is all like the longer it is, the better chance you have. And if it's less competitive, you can have a shorter post there. Um, what happens is a lot of people churn out a bunch of really small, short, low quality blogs that don't have a lot of substance. And then Google recognizes that. And they're just trying to go after keywords. They don't rank you for anything. You just wasted a ton of time. For us on Ignite, everything that we do and everything we try to do for clients is a thousand words or more, and we're publishing, you know, daily. And um, it's it's something I've done because it's been a great investment for the business. I wish I would have started at this level day one. Honestly, I mean, now up to eighty thousand visitors a month. I, by this time next year, we'll be over two hundred thousand visitors a month, and our clients are seeing it too. You know, we have some clients we're doing forty, fifty pages of content a month for, and uh, you know, it's it's really works. But it's quality, and it can be a big initiative. If you're just getting started, start small, one blog a week, 1,000 words. So so what I'm hearing is go deep on the thing that you want to be known for, right? So your authority, so go 10,000 words and Yeah, up. that's right. And then when you want to be top of mind still, come in and don't be afraid to talk about news or what's going on in the industry. Yeah. That's your little ancillary stuff yeah. that you add on so they're not overthinking it, but they can get started and just focus on what they're good at. Yeah, that's how it works. It's like if it's a news thing, get something out quick, boom. You can always go back and add to it later if you really want to, but get it out quick, be seen as the expert. If it's something you want to rank for, make it long. Yeah, so... That makes sense for some, uh, you know, some of the setup and for some difficult terms. But if I'm a new guy, yeah, just starting my, you know, my store, yeah, you know, and I, I I'm afraid of blogging, I'm afraid of writing. What do I write? Yeah. What do I? How do I start? What do I? What do I write about? So, what you write about is um, whatever you uh, want your users to see you as an authority in, um, as a subject matter expert in. And there's kind of, you know, a couple different ways to go about it. One, you want to be a subject matter expert. You want to write on the industry. You want people to feel that passion. You want to do it just outside. Out, you want to do it outside of SEO. You want people to see you as a thought leader. So they're like, oh, there's some soul behind this website, right? This guy's cranking stuff out. He cares about it, right? And, and because of that, it humanizes the brand online. They see your picture. They're like, I want to buy from him, right? So sure. that's the way to do it. And then, you know, the next step is if you really want to rank for stuff, put your competitor into SEM Rush. Try to find out all the terms inside of there that, that he's ranking for and write blog posts on that that kind of incorporate those terms but don't compete with the other sections of your website like your categories and stuff. So similar but not copied, obviously. Now, you don't want to copy it, but, you know, you put your own spin on it. Sure. And make it better. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. So, so blogging is a must-do a must for SEO. Uh, if you know, if yeah. you guys have writer's block, 
you pretty much just have to get over it. Uh, <laughs> John, how many, you've written 5,000? Yeah. All five, right. Five to ten at this point. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of blocks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it so, works, though. So, guys, you just have to do number one. Get to number one. That's right. All right. Thanks, John. This is Jesse Ness with the Equity Commerce Show. For more information on Equid, check out Equid.com. And for more on Ignite Visibility, IgniteVisibility.com. Thank you. Well, Rich, there's another great show. And when you add it all together with the other shows, you won't miss any strategies or new tactics on how to grow your online business. So to make sure you don't miss anything, subscribe on your favorite podcast player. Rich, what player do you like? Uh, probably Stitcher. All right. How about you? I'm, I'm an Apple podcast guy. I'm an Apple guy on that. Yeah. And we're growing right now. A listener asked us to add Google Play as a platform. So we just added that a couple of weeks ago. We have Spotify, SoundCloud. Nice. We're everywhere. So subscribe on your favorite platform and don't forget to rate and review us. So we know what you think. Yeah. Rate how we're doing. Review on what we have done. Tell us topics you'd like us to cover. Uh, tell us if you think we're great and you uh, are going to take over the world. Subscribe, rate, and review. It's the only way we'll know. And it keeps the shows coming. Thanks, everybody.